associated to a linear transformation, that is associated to a matrix, there's going to be a bunch of different very important subspaces. And so we're going to look at today in this video two different such subspaces, the null space and the column space. So I want you to imagine that you've got some transformation. And I'm going to take a particular transformation which is going to have the defining matrix A being 1, 0, 0, 0. So before we even talk about the null space or the uh, column space, let's just sort of figure out how this particular transformation works. If I take the vector E1, that's the vector 1, 0, then what happens here, multiply it in, it doesn't change at all. So I can put that down right over here and it does not change. So my transformation applied to E1 is just going to be exactly the same thing as the E1. However, this is not true for the E2. So the E2, which sits right up here, this is the vector 0, 1. If I apply my matrix to that, it goes to the 0 vector. So I don't know really how to draw this, but maybe I'll just draw a circular dot right down here at the origin. So in other words, it takes the E2 and it plops it down. And generally, if I take any x, y here, the way this particular matrix works is going to be the x component doesn't change, but the y component gets zeroed out. So if I take any random vector like, say, that one, then what's going to happen is that the, the y component is going to go away and it's just going to end up lying down here, pointing in the negative x direction. All right. So now let's talk about the null space. The null space is all of the vectors in the domain that end up getting mapped to zero. So when I write it in this set builder notation, I'm talking about all x's in Rn. Note that Rn is the domain, it's the starting point for my transformation, such that they're going to be mapped by zero, or Ax is going to be equal to zero. So for this transformation that I have up here, what is going to be the null space? Well, when I think about what my transformation does, it, it takes any vector we might have, and it sort of zeroes out its y component and leaves behind its x component. So every vector doesn't end up having a y component after I apply the a, or at least it has, has a y component of zero. But if I want to have it being precisely the zero vector, I need its x component to be zero as well. And since the x component never changes under my transformation, the null space is all of the vectors right on the y-axis. Any vector on the y-axis, well, the x component doesn't change, so it still stays as x equal to zero, but the y component is brought down to zero. So in other words, the y-axis is going to be the null space for this transformation. that is, the null space for this particular matrix is going to be the set of all vectors where the first component has to be zero, but that the second component is allowed to be arbitrary. By the way, don't confuse the, the x without a hat and the x with a hat. When I think about x with a, with a vector hat, I'm just choosing a generic vector. If I was to write x without a hat, it's the x component of my generic vector. And in this case, the x component of this big vector x happens to be zero. Nonetheless, a more convenient way of writing it down is just to say that this is going to be the y-axis. Now let's investigate the column space. I'm going to define the column space to be all linear combinations of the columns of A. Now, we might recall when we did matrix vector products that Linear combinations of the columns of A were just described by the matrix A times the vector x. In other words, asking for all possible linear combinations of the columns of A is just asking for every single x, tell me all of the Ax's that are out there. In other words, I can write this in set builder notation as the set of all vectors B they are going to be, by the way, living in my codomain that has the property where some linear combination of the columns of A, that is some Ax, is going to be equal to that vector B. All right, 
So that's my definition of the column space of A, and let's try to investigate what is the column space of A for the transformation that we had talked about earlier. Well, what did the transformation do? It took every vector and it sent it straight down to the x-axis, sort of sending its y component to zero. But now what I'm looking for is, in a sense, all of the output values. I want to look at the range of my matrix A. I want to look at all possible AXs. Well, nothing that isn't on the x-axis is allowed to be included because my transformation takes everything down onto the x-axis. And because vectors that are already living on the x-axis don't change under this transformation, the entire uh, x-axis is in my image. Everything on the x-axis is hit, well, by itself, among an entire vertical column of other possibilities. So I'm going to claim that the image, or the column space of A, is going to be the x-axis. Now, I've given a relatively simple and straightforward matrix so that we can just sort of visualize what happens and that's how we figured out what the null space was and what the column space was, but if I give you a longer and more complicated matrix, it's really not that much harder. Indeed, if I focus in on what the null space is, well, this is all about solving all of the x's where ax is equal to zero. But we know how to do that. We've already figured out how to solve homogeneous systems ax equal to zero. So, in other words, to solve for the null space, all that you do is just solve ax equal to zero and you write down what the possible x's are. We've seen that many times. Now, for the column space, we don't have quite such a clean answer. I can't easily just describe the entire column space the way I can for the null space, because I really know how to solve ax equal to zero. What I can do for the column space, however, is it is defined by the equation ax equal to b, and we've studied that many times. So if I give you any b, and I've given some matrix A, you should be able to tell me, is b inside of your column space, or is it not inside of your column space? And the ability to do that depends on, can you solve ax equal to b? And then I'm going to leave as an open question the question of how do I nicely describe the column space if I have a specific matrix? For the null space, we know how to do that. We're going to go and reduce ax equal to zero. We're going to find some free columns. We're going to put in some from parameters. We're going to have this like really clean way to write down what all possible solutions are. But we don't yet have a nice clean way to write down all solutions to ax equal to b. We can just quickly verify for any given b whether or not it can be solved. 